morning, FHS. I'm Gabrielle, and here are your announcements for Monday, September 20th. National Pizza Pepperoni Day. To celebrate this awesome holiday, here's a pizza fact. Did you know 350 slices of pizza are consumed every second in the U.S.? That's a lot of pizza. The virtue of this week is patience. Patience is quiet hope and trust, expecting things to turn out all right. Patience is being calm and tolerant when difficult things happen. It's me it means showing acceptance when you or others make mistakes. Patience is doing something now so that later it will bear fruit, like planting a seed and waiting for it to grow. Patience is a commitment to the future. Please continue to practice the virtue of patience with yourself, with others, and together as we all do our best to keep ourselves, our families, and our community protected from COVID-19. Starting off, we have some news about the arts. FHS production is back! We're beginning rehearsals for Anastasia on Wednesday, September 22nd, after school from 3.30 to 5.00 p.m. in the Tom Morrison Theatre. No additions or experiences necessary. Those interested in stage or tech crew should see Mr. Weber. Glee Choir will be meeting in the TMT for rehearsals Monday at lunch and Tuesday after school. Please eat your lunch before coming into the TMT and masks will be required. All voices are welcome. Please see Ms. Vermeersch and C38 for further information. The FHS String Ensemble will hold its first rehearsal on Monday at noon in the band room in the music department. Please see Ms. Milne if you have any questions. Here's some information about clubs. The FHS Debate Club starts practicing for the upcoming season next week. New members are welcome on Tuesday in C107. If you're interested in the FHS Coding Club, meetings are held every Thursday at lunch in E108. Contact Mr. Stewart for further details. Students interested in joining or continuing with Chess Club this year, please meet in lunch hour on Tuesday, September 21st in Ms. Jarvis's class, room C73. All levels from beginner to expert are welcome. If interest is high, we will consider running a beginner's group. The FHS Safe Space is starting up again. Meetings are held every Wednesday in Ms. Bray's room, C110. Our first meeting will be held on Wednesday, September 22nd in C110. Here are some sports-related updates. If you're interested in joining the FHS boys hockey team, you can sign up for tryouts online. More information is available on their Twitter page, at FHS Black Cats. FHS Intramural Basketball is starting up soon. Games will be scheduled for noon hour in the main gym. Starting on Thursday, sign-up sheets will be located on the athletic board in the PE hallways at the bottom of the ramp. And don't forget, the next FHS baseball game will be at the Thompson Field at 5 on September 21st. And lastly, here's something about the student vote. Ahead of Monday's vote, FHS local candidates were given questions from grade 9 to 12 students to give you a chance to hear their point of view on matters you care about. Here is Liberal candidate Jenica Atwin with her responses about improving the economy, helping people in Afghanistan, making healthcare more accessible, and improving housing and living standards. Good morning, Fredericton High School. I'm Jenica Atwin. I am your Liberal candidate this time around for the upcoming federal election. And I just wanted to do a special shout out to your school because I used to work there. Um, hello, Wendy and Cindy and Larry and all the amazing teachers that I used to have the opportunity to spend a lot of my time with. Um, so thank you so much again for participating in the student vote this year. It's always exciting to see how students, you know, predict usually what's happening at the federal election level. So your engagement is really important and continue that as you move on in life and make sure that you vote, vote, vote when you get the opportunity to do that. Your questions were excellent and I'm happy to run down them for you as fast as I can. Your first question is about rescuing the economy post COVID and doing it in a way that's sustainable for the environment. We know that the environment and the economy go hand in hand. Uh, so they don't have to be in competition with one another. And this is what I'm really excited about. But we also know we have to get past COVID-19 in order to get to this transitional phase. So vaccines are critically important. Continue to follow our public health measures so we can get out of this. Um, I will say that 95% of the jobs lost during the pandemic experience have already been recovered. Um, our economy is rebounding faster than so many other countries in the G7. Uh, we need to tackle inflation. We need to look at affordability. That's a big piece for supporting the middle class. Uh, we have a housing strategy and anti-poverty strategy. Also, we're transitioning off of fossil fuels. There's gonna be a lot more opportunities in the green energy sector. Ending subsidies is a big piece about doing that. Um, and finally, I think the most exciting piece is the $10 a day childcare, because we know that every dollar invested in early childhood education, we get back $3. It's also about supporting women and young families as they recover and get back into the economy. Your second question is about the Taliban in Afghanistan. 
you know, it's uh, we can't always predict when a humanitarian crisis will hit the world, but we also know that Canada has a big role to play and a responsibility specifically in rescuing any citizens and anyone who helped our Canadian Armed Forces in their operations. Uh, my brother-in-law, he did a tour in Afghanistan. Um, he does have PTSD, so that's another piece at home that we need to focus on is making sure we support veterans and soldiers. Um, I will say that the risk to Canadians is is low um, at the time being. There's an incredible network of individuals who are helping with settlement operations. Um, here in New Brunswick, we've already welcomed um, a certain number of uh, you know, people who have who've just come back and been rescued from Afghanistan. We know there are more that need to be rescued. There are efforts, uh, you know, in coordination with other nations, uh, the UK, the United States, to make sure that everyone can be rescued in a timely fashion. Safety is paramount and, of course, welcoming newcomers into our, our region and hopefully here in the Fredericton area is going to take all of us and all of your support. Um, so thanks again for this really important question. Number three is on healthcare. This is the most important thing. I'm hearing this at every door that I knock on. We know there's an extreme shortage in nurses and doctors, psychologists as well. Uh, there is a plan to recruit 7,500 more doctors, nurse teams, empower nurse practitioners. Um, and you know we need we need a mental health strategy that inc includes standards across the country, um, access to mental health clinics, which is something I'm really really passionate about. So that's going to require more resources. We we need more money coming in in those health transfer dollars with specific earmarked funding for things like mental health. Um, finally, you've got, you know, the piece about housing. Um, housing is another big issue that I'm hearing at just about every single door. And this is something that's happening across the country. We really are at crisis levels. Uh, we have a very low vacancy right here in the Fredericton area. We know housing is a right. So there's lots of work to do here at all levels of government. It's going to take all hands on deck. Um, you know, in the platform this time around, there is a commitment to build 1.4 million homes in new stock because we know stock is a specific issue. Um, it's also about uh, a first time home buyers tax credit, ensuring that those that are ready to, to get a mortgage can be able to do so, um, increase their savings. We also need to protect against predatory speculators and those that might be, you know, flipping houses to really inflate the market. There's a lot of issues around that as well. And of course, wages. Wages is an important piece to all of this. There is a commitment to raise the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. Um, which would hopefully, you know, push the provinces to respond. But, you know, personally, I believe that a livable wage is, is $18 plus, and we really need to get there as a society. So keep asking those questions. These are very important things. And I look forward to the opportunity to be your member of parliament. Once again, it has been an honor and a privilege. Um, thanks again for participating in Student Vote. Bye. And these have been your announcements for Monday, September 20th. Happy National Pepperoni Pizza Day, and have a fantastic day, FHS.